Hello and welcome back to the Milan Save on Football Manager 2023. Now, since the last episode where we confirmed our passage through to the knockout stages of the Champions League, we've played two league games off camera. We started off with an away game against last season's Serie A champions Atlanta and we managed to win. We won 2-0. Rafa Leao and Olivier Giroud getting on the score sheet. Unfortunately, Rafa Leao went on to pick up a, an injury, which is going to keep him out of today's game it's a pulled calf muscle he's expected to be out for another one to two days so we today we play Porto next game obviously later in the episode we play against Celtic so we might be able to play that one it depends though because obviously we've already qualified for the Champions League knockout rounds not going to risk players if we've got league games that are coming up and then in the other game off camera we played Empoli away from home and we managed a, a win in this one as well. It was just a 1-0 win. Thiago Gouveia was the only goal of the game but we managed to stop them from having a shot on target and it was a, a pretty comfortable victory in the end. And those results mean that we've climbed up the table a little bit. We were ninth, I believe at the end of last episode. We are now up to 7th on 22 points, level on points with Roma and Lazio who are 5th and 6th and we're now only 5 points off top of the table Inter so we're still in and around the conversation for winning the league possibly, but more likely Champions League football for next season. But of course, the focus for this episode is the Champions League game. So it's ourselves against Porto and in the other game in our group, it's Celtic against Club Bruges. So all of the three other teams in our group can still get qualification. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Obviously, we're, we're hoping to, to continue our unbeaten run in this competition this season with a victory against Porto but we, we will make some changes to the side. So this is the lineup that we're going to go with for this first Champions League game against Porto. We have a changing goal today, a forced changing goal. Mike Minan has a cold so we sent him home. He should just miss this match, he should be back for the, the next game in the league against Napoli. We've got Wilfred Singo coming in at right back, Kalulu and Kier in central defence with Fudi Balatore coming in at left back, Tomas Bavega and Malik Theor in defensive midfield, Theor getting a rare start for us. Brahim Diaz at right wing, Junior, Mas Junior Masias at attacking centre midfield with Dakru Fafana, the man who's been coming in to play instead of Rafa Leao at left wing. Rafa Leao, like I said, should hope to be back for the next game. And then Olivier Giroud up top. Obviously, we don't need to win this game, but it would be nice if we did. So, first chance of the game, it's Singo with the throwing down the right hand side, finds Junior Masias. Nice ball over the top to Giroud. He's going to have to hold this ball up a little bit though. Tries the ball into the box. It's blocked by Max and cleared eventually by Max. Good header in the air by Kalulu though. Now Thior down to Brahim Diaz. Good tackle once more from Max. And Porto coming forward with the ball now with Mehdi Taremi. Uh, marked as the danger man last time by me. But Singo with a great challenge there. And we can get back on the attack. Singo cut, cut inside and is dispossessed by Mehdi Taremi. Now Zeko with the ball. Long ball forward from Eden Zeko. Sukic is in a foot race here with... Is that Pabega? I think it's Pabega. Sukic finds a ball to... Eustaquio, Eustaquio with a curling effort just over the top of the goal. Pabega switches player out wide right to Brahim Diaz who skips past his defender. Now Brahim Diaz switches play to Datro inside to Malik Theo. It's Malik Theo advancing on goal. Malik Theo with a shot and that's just pulled wide by the young defensive midfielder. Long ball forward from Simon Kier towards Olivier Giroud. That's one in the air though by David Carmo and now Sukic has it for FC Porto. Bad pass from Sukic though, intercepted and pounced on by Fudi Balatori, who was advancing forward at some pace. Giroud gets the ball from him and then loses it with a terrible pass. But the ball is won back by Messias. Giroud has found himself through on goal. It's Giroud! And Giroud has opened the scoring 14th goal of the season, making up for that poor pass about 20 seconds ago and finishing off a, a bit of a, a poor defensive move from FC Porto. They they lost the ball quite easily with El Neni there. They sort of got under each other's feet. Messias with a great tackle. Datro Fafana with a short pass to Giroud and then Giroud placing it past the keeper. And we are on course to continue our unbeaten run in the Champions League. Well, elsewhere in the competition, obviously we're playing the early kickoff today. The other game is Tottenham Ajax in Group E and Alexis Salamakas, former AC Milan player, has opened the scoring for Spurs in that game. Now, great tackle from Datro Fafana. Balatore has got the ball at his feet, plays inside to Pabega. Now Junior Messias forward to Thior, one touch pass in Giroud, through to Datru Fafana on this left hand side, just needs to wait for people to get into the box, which he does, ball in towards Giroud, first time, and what a finish that is from Olivier Giroud, a left footed volley, Fafana 
did brilliantly to hold up play while he waited for players to join in the box and Olivier Giroud was the man that got on the end of the cross you see this lovely one touch pass in here Dato Fofana eventually getting the ball down the left hand side cuts back on himself ball into the box and then Giroud with a volley into the corner and it's 2-0 after 35 minutes what a finish from Olivier Giroud Adziamitovic dispossessed by Malik Thior now Kier can get us on the attack Dato Fafana moving forward with the ball now inside to Junior Messias. Junior Messias in tons of space. Messias with a shot and it's off the post from Junior Messias. Almost a third for us. Throw in deep in our half. It's Hadzi Amatovic getting the ball from the throw in. Really trying to say that name properly. It's a difficult one as well. Mario finds himself through on goal. And Jungdal makes the save and Kier tried to clear it. Kalulu eventually clearing it and then Singo just smashing it out for a throw in. I don't know how we didn't concede there. Another free kick for Porto. They seem to be piling on the pressure now. Max with the ball to the back post. It's Grich and Grich has scored for Porto. Marco Grich with his fourth goal of the season. The former Liverpool man has got Porto away back into this game. And with 20 minutes to go, we're going to make a few changes. There's some players looking tired out there. Uh, there's also some players that aren't playing too great as well. So Pabega is going to make way. And we are going to bring on Ishmael Benesa to, to try and sure things up a little bit. Uh, left wing... I think I think we'll change yeah we will change that I was, was wondering whether Rafa Leao was going to be fit for the next game but I think he he might have a fitness test thing next to him so we'll we'll take Datru Fafana off and we will bring on Roback now Emil Roback Swedish attacking left midfielder let's see what he can do I don't think he's had much of an opportunity for us Two centre-backs have a pretty poor rating at the moment as well. Um, our only option is really Tamori on the bench. I don't want to don't want to waste him if I don't have to. So we'll leave it there, I think, for now. Fjord, nice pass to Roback. Can Roback get something created for us? He plays that inside to Benesa instead. And back to Malik Thior now. Roback. There's a, a runner through the middle in Junior Messias. And Linola is going to foul him. And Linola is on... Oh, Lerola, sorry, is on a yellow card... He is going to get his second yellow and Paul Larola has been sent off. That could be the end of Porto's comeback. They look like they could actually, it looks like they could still come back. Max with a corner, Makano with a header and that's just over the top of the goal. Andreas Jungdahl breathes a sigh of relief there in goal. Corner at the other end now with Benesa towards Olivier Giroud. It's off the bar and it's cleared by Mehdi Taremi. That was an opportunity to regain our two-goal lead, but it wasn't taken as Benesa is dispossessed by Galeno, who comes forward with the ball now. And Galeno needs a bit of support, I think. There's plenty of Milan players back. He's trying to run past all of them, but Singo gets the challenge in. Kaludu with a bad pass. Wow, Mario is pouncing on that. And Porto with a chance now to get a late equaliser. It's Juan Mario through on goal. And Juan Mario has got his second goal of the season. Porto's second of the game, and despite them being down to 10 men, they've managed to equalise. Very, very disappointing. Obviously, we are we are playing a rotated side today, so can't be too annoyed, but a two-goal lead, we should be holding on to that. Now, despite the fact Giroud is on for a hat-trick, I'm going to take him off because he is looking very tired out there. We don't have many options on the bench, so Diketa Lea is going to come on as a striker. It's a position he's played in a little bit for us before. Uh, he doesn't play there regularly. And then I'm going to bring Thiago Gouveia on for Brahim Diaz as well. See if Gouveia can inject some sort of chance into our game. And then I think I've got one more change. So we'll bring on Zanoli at right back because Singo is very tired as well. It's Kalulu with a long ball forward and we could get on a counter attack of our own now with Thiago Gouveia running down the right hand side. He's only been on the pitch a matter of minutes. Plays it inside of Messias. He needs to cross the ball in. It's Messias. And I don't know why he didn't pass the ball across a lot earlier there, Junior Messias. But there's the full-time whistle. It's our first dropped point of the Champions League campaign. Disappointing. We were two goals up. They went down to 10 men, but we couldn't get the win. So in the other games in the Champions League on this game day, we had Tottenham play in Ajax. They won 2-1 eventually. Obviously, they played at the same time as us. Elsewhere in their group, Olympiacos and Atletico drawing 3-3. In Group F, Liverpool beat Copenhagen 5-0. Real Madrid beat Leipzig 2-0. The other game in our group, Celtic beat Club Bruges 2-1, which I think puts them into second position in the, the second qualifying spot from our group, but we'll double-check in a second. In Group H, Atlanta beating Dortmund away from home by a goal to nil, and then Leon smashing Red Star Belgrade by six goals to nil. So taking a look at our half of the group, 
And we can see that Spurs have confirmed their qualification into the next round. Atletico are currently one point ahead of Ajax heading into the final match week. And they are in second place. Real Madrid and Liverpool occupy the two qualifying spots from Group F, but Red Bull Leipzig are only a point behind them. So that's all to play for with three teams possibly uh, fighting it out for qualification in the next game week. As I said, in Group G actually, Celtic have confirmed their qualification into the knockout round. It's ourselves and Celtic going through to the knockout stages of the Champions League. So a big result for the Scottish side there. Porto, disappointing. Uh, obviously, they must have needed knew that they needed to win against us today, which is why they came back to to, to draw 2-2 two, two eventually. And then in Group H, it's Atalanta leading the way, but only two points ahead of both Lyon and Dortmund. Lyon occupying the second qualifying spot there. So it's going to be interesting to see who else is going to qualify. Obviously, we've got the other half of the draw that's going to be played tomorrow in game, but we'll 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 come back and have a look at how things went before the next Champions League game. In the meantime. Before we get to that Champions League game, I'll play the Napoli game off camera and hopefully we can pick up a, a win. So we've played that league game against Napoli at home and despite going a goal down after four minutes, thanks to a goal from Ez Abdi for Napoli, we managed to win 2-1. Giroud scoring less than a minute later to level things and then Charles de Ketelea getting the eventual winner on the 67th minute with an assist from Rafa Leao. Now, obviously, the transfer window is coming up on us, and I thought I'd get ahead of things by trying to make a few sign-ins. We've got £40 million worth of budget, and I wanted to spend a decent chunk of that on Gabriel Barbosa. Now, you may remember Gabriel Barbosa. Uh, he was sort of famed as a, a bit of a wonder kid, I think, early on in his career. Uh, he played for Santos originally, and then he got a big money move to, to Inter. But unfortunately, things didn't really work out for him in Europe. Um, you can see he played for Inter nine times, scoring only one goal, loaned out to Benfica, played only once, didn't score, then loaned to Santos where he obviously bagged lots of goals because that's where he's from. Same again at Flamenco, back to Inter and then eventually signed for Flamenco for £15 million. So uh, I thought we'd give him another chance in Europe. However, uh, we got all the way through to this stage where I could have confirmed the signing and then I realised that we wouldn't have any non-EU player slots available for registering him until next season so i've cancelled that deal but that's not all our transfer news we are also looking at a center back mattia viti an italian player he used to play for empoli actually he's now at nice in the french league he again he's very young 21 years old uh, he's been it's the scout report says he's a terrific signer for the future he's got an a minus scout report we are currently working on a deal to sign him for 20 million up front possibly rising to 40 million pounds and then he would be loaned back to nice for the rest of the season um, mainly because Simon Kier is getting on a bit and I do think that soon we will there will come a time where it's time for him to move on and more options at centre-back will be needed. So Mattia Vitti seems to, to fit the mould perfectly. Letting him have the rest of the season at Nice gives him a bit more experience in the first team, hopefully. Um, I can see he's only, he's only played six times. He's only played three times from the start in League 1 this season, but uh, hopefully he'll, he'll get a few more games for them since they, they want him on loan for some reason. So hopefully that's the play him. And then the other player that we're looking at is Moussa Dembele from Lyon. Now, Divock Origi obviously left us. We've got Giroud who can play up front. We don't have another experienced striker. Well, we, they're all youngsters, the rest of our striking options. So I thought, let's have a look at who's scoring goals in the top tier of football or the top divisions in Europe this season. And Moussa Dembele came up. He's got 16 goals in 20 games so far this season across the Champions League, Ligue 1 and the Trophée des Champions. Uh, and yeah, we're, we're, we're making a move for him. Initial fee of 14.5 million, possibly rising up to 20.5 million pounds. I'm just trying to use this budget to, to give us a bit more depth for the, the knockout stages of the Champions League, which we obviously will be getting to. Neither of these sign-ins have been confirmed yet. It'll be probably next episode, I imagine, where I'll be confirming that they've either signed or they haven't. But I just thought I'd keep you up to date on things. And then there's also been some transfer dealings in terms of outcomes as well. Junior Messias, uh, I'm, I'm trying to move him on now. He wanted to be loaned out to get uh, a move away from the club. And I thought, why not just sell you anyway? So he's got a couple of offers on him from Benfica and Zenit. I think the Benfica option is four and a bit million that rises up to six million. And then the Zenit one is similar amount that rises up to seven million pounds. So um, I'm just happy to get anything for him, to be honest. He's not 
played great when he has played for us this season. And yeah, just a nice bit of extra cash would be good. Incidentally, after that result against Napoli, we have risen in the Serie A table up to fifth now on 25 points. We're five points off top of the table. Juve into uh, dropping points in the last game week. I think they drew 1-1 one -one with Verona, which means that Juve have taken over at the top of the table. But of course, it is all very tight up there. We've still got to play all those teams again this season. There's only 13 games gone, so plenty of time for us to find our way back to the top of the table. But obviously our focus is on the game against Celtic, our final group game in the Champions League. We'll, we'll take a look at how things stand currently. Obviously this is the Wednesday game, so the, the first half of the Champions League groups are all settled now. So we'll have a look at them as well. So we can see Benfica and Nice qualifying from the, the, the very open Group A on paper. Shakhtar just missing out by a point from qualification, getting into the Europa League spot. Group B, it's Bayern and Napoli that qualify from there. Arsenal are uh, missing out on knockout football. They're falling into the Europa League. In Group C, it's Man City and Barcelona who have qualified. You would have expected that on paper, judging on the group. Red Bull Salzburg missing out on any further European football this season with Munch and Gladbach finishing in the Europa League spot. Group D, last season's winners of the Champions League, PSG finishing top of their group with our fellow Milan side, side Inter finishing level on points and in the second qualification spot on goal difference, I'm guessing, and then Sporting taking the Europa League spot. But then we come into our half of the group draw and we've obviously know Tottenham, they've qualified top of their group, but it is all to play for between Atletico and Ajax. Not sure Olympiacos can qualify uh, judging on their results against other teams, but definitely up there uh, challenging Atletico and Ajax. And then in Group F, it's completely open. We've got no teams qualified from there. Real Madrid and Liverpool level on point on ten points. Leipzig have nine points. Who are who are they playing? So Leipzig have got Liverpool. Real are playing Copenhagen. So really, you'd expect Real to beat Copenhagen. So that's Real through Leipzig and Liverpool. The winner of that game is going to be the the other team to qualify from Group F of the Champions League. Our group's already sorted. So this game is just a. Uh, a nothing game really and then in group h still all to play for between atlanta leon and dortmund atlanta are facing leon and dortmund have got red star belgrade so you'd expect dortmund to qualify and then whoever wins between atlanta and leon so it's all very open heading into this final match day not in our group but you know i can is there is there anything to fight for in terms of third place in our group no that's all sorted as well porto uh, in the europa league so yeah we'll just we'll just enjoy a, a good game of football hopefully Incidentally, this is the, the last game before our winter break. So we are, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm not going to play a full strength side because there's literally no point in anyone getting injured or anything. We're going to play a slightly rotated side. We've got Mike Minen and Goal. Singo are a £20 million right back that we've signed and barely played at right back. Kalulu and Kier in central defence and Balotore on the left side of defence with Tommaso Bebega and Malik Thior getting a rare start in defensive midfield. Brahim Diaz is our right winger today with Samuel Vignato who can he play the full 90? Should be all right to play the full 90 in attack and centre midfield with Datro Fafana at left wing. And then, because we don't really have many other options that I trust up front, we've got Olivier Giroud. So obviously mainly going to keep an eye on the other groups in today's game. Group F and Group H are the, the ones that we're really looking at. And I think uh, Liverpool could be about to not make the, the knockout stages of the Champions League. They are losing to Red Bull Leipzig as Moy takes a corner kick towards Starfelt. It's headed away by Kalulu, but it falls on the edge of the box to Jota. Jota coming into the box now. I think he scored against us last time and he scored against us again. Opening goal of the game is Jota with his 10th goal of the season for Celtic. And we find ourselves a goal down. Kier, forward to Pabega. Pabega switching to the right-hand side for Brahim Diaz and it's a, it's a beautiful ball. Diaz... Pulls the ball into the box, cleared by Starfelt. Giroud was just coming onto that one there, but we've still got a chance now. Pabega, ball over the top. Vignato, Vignato, surely! And Samuele Vignato with his second goal of the season has leveled things up on the half an hour mark. And it was an excellent ball over the top from Pabega. Two balls that were the great from Pabega in that move. The initial one of Brahim Diaz and then the one over the top of the defence to Samuele Vignato, who has been a great signing for us, the youngster in attack and centre midfield. Uh, he's, he's very accomplished at scoring goals. So a great backup for Charles de Ketelea. Juranovic plays it short to Carter Vickers. And gets it back now as we press high up the field. Starfelt into the centre of the field to O'Reilly. Switches the ball to the left to Jota, who's got one already today. He'll be looking to possibly create a goal here. Plays it back to Taylor instead. Taylor coming into the box now. 
crossed into a bar there, a bar with a header, and that's over the goal. And Liverpool have levelled in their game against Red Bull Leipzig, so they are into the knockout qualification spots as Carter Vickers headers just over the bar in our game. In the Group H, Atlanta and Leon are currently playing out a nil-nil draw, so Atlanta are finding themselves being in the, the second qualifying spot in that group as we reach half-time. Simon Kier, forward to Malik Thior. Now Datru Fafana on the left-hand side. Lovely ball inside to Vignato. Vignato holding the ball up, plays it back to Thior. Ball over the top towards Datru. Datru! And Datru has scored! I thought the keeper was coming out to collect that. It's going to be checked by VAR for offside, I think, as Datru Fafana may have just, just been offside. And it, it is offside. He's, the goal's been disallowed. We'll, we should see a replay now. Uh, I, I was fully expecting the keeper to be able to come out and collect that, so I was a bit shocked when that went in, as, yeah, he's just just straight offside there, Datru Fafana. Good finish, though. Carter Vickers with a long ball down this right-hand side to Juranovic. He miss controls that ball, and it falls to Balotore at the back. Looking to, to get on the attack for us now. Plays a forward to Datru. Now Malik Thior, great pass from him. Great vision from Malik Thior to find Vignato there. Datru Fafana gets it back from Vignato. He's cutting inside now. Datru Fafana on a bit of a run. Forward to Vignato. He's got one already today. And he tries to get a second. But he fires it over the top of the goal. So 60 minutes gone. Just now over an hour played. And we're going to make our first two changes of the game. It's going to be Brahim Diaz coming off. And we are going to give... Gouveia uh, run out. Yeah, we'll put Gouveia on. Uh, he's obviously our starting right winger normally, given a bit of a rest today. And then Jury was going to also come off. And we're going to say farewell to a player. Junior Messias is going to come on for Gouveia. And in fact, I think we might move Vignato up front and the Messias into the attacking centre midfield role. And Liverpool have turned things around in their game against RB Leipzig. So they are joining Real Madrid in the knockout stages as things stand. In Group H, Dortmund still leading against Red Star Belgrade by three goals to one. No goals in the atlanta Leon game, which means Atlanta will be also qualified for the knockout stages as Messias whips in a corner towards Malik Thior, headed away by O'Reilly and then headed further away for some reason by Ajeti. He mustn't have got a call to say that he had a bit of time to bring that down there. And he just gives possession away as we find ourselves on the ball once more, looking to get a late winner. And it's Malik Thior in the centre of the field. Great ball from him to Gouveia. Gouveia, surely, what's he doing? Oh, I think it was blocked. I thought he just scooped that up and over and wide there, but it was blocked by Starfelt. And we have a corner. Malik Thior, by the way, has been, he's been great today. He's been at the centre of, of pretty much everything that I've seen on the highlights. As Messiah whips a corner in from the right-hand side and Joe Hart comes and collects that quite easily. So there is the full-time whistle. The two sides from our group that have qualified, obviously ourselves and Celtic, playing out a, a one-all draw. So after all six games in our half of the Champions League group stage, this is how things have ended up. So in Group E, Tottenham and, Atle and Atletico remain in the top two places. Uh, Ajax missing out by one point, but they do fall into the Europa League. In Group F, Leipzig obviously took the lead against Liverpool 1-0. I think it ended 3-1 in that game to Liverpool, completely turning the game around and qualifying alongside Real Madrid, who beat Copenhagen. Uh, Group G we knew about. And then Group H, Dortmund climbing to the top of the table, I think. Or were they there already? They might have been there already. Anyway, Dortmund and Atlanta qualifying from Group H with Lyon falling in to the Europa League. I think the group stage draw of the Champions League isn't too far away as well, so we'll probably stick around for that in this episode. So the, the draw of the Champions League is in four days' time, so we will stick around for that in this episode. But before we get to that, we've got a, a signing that we can actually confirm in the episode. It is Moussa Dembele joining us for a, a fee that could rise up to £20.5 million. Pounds. He's on the same wage that Divock Origi was on, and I'd argue he might be slightly better than Divock Origi. And no, without any further ado, we're just going to gonna click accept, and then come the 2nd of January, we will have... Uh, a decent backup striker. Board probably not going to be happy about the fact I've signed a 27-year-old for the first team, given our, our vision of uh, signing players under the age of 22. But I feel like I've signed enough players under the age of 22 where this one can just sort of fly under the radar. Oh yeah, and we've we've also signed Giroud to a, a another one-year extension. Uh, increase in wages for him as well, but unlike Zlatan, I think... I think Olivier Giroud deserves it for his performances so far this season. At least his goals so far this season. And our other signing is also going to be confirmed in this episode. Mattia Vitti joining us for 20 million 
uh, up front could rise to, to 42 million pounds obviously he's going to be loaned back to nice for the rest of the season but uh nice to have him on board okay so here we go it is time for the round of 16 draw for the champions league i wonder who is going to be hosting this jermaine dennett i don't even know who that is who who are, who are you some argentinian guy that's played for some italian teams okay whatever uh let's kick things off then so hang on are we we're seeded we're one of the seeded teams finishing top so nice are a team that we could face um let's click advance that's very easy we've just signed someone from nice who's going to be on loan i can't i'm not sure if he's going to be able to play against us or not mattia viti plays for nice that's going to be interesting that is a, a, a relatively easy draw though for us i would say that's a big game. Barca PSG is the second match out of the draw. Inter Spurs, they obviously had a, a big uh, Champions League tie quite a while ago with Gareth Bale uh, when he still played for them. Celtic Benfica, decent match. Atlanta have got a very tough game against Real Madrid. Atlanta struggling in the league, so that could be a tough game for them. Napoli will play Man City, another tough game for the Italian side. And Liverpool are playing Bayern. Atletico... Who have Atletico got? Dortmund. So that's all That's all the, the knockout round draw. That's the round of 16 draw, I should say. We've got a, a bet. That's probably the easiest draw we, we could have got, really, I think, against against Nice. So hopefully we can come out of that with a win and push on to the, the quarterfinals. So <laughs> well, we've, we've, got a, we've got a hell of a lot of games to play in the, the meantime between this episode and the next one. Uh, so it could be a few days before we get the the next episode out after this one. Uh, a lot of games. But we, we play Nice in the round of 16. The first leg coming on the 20th of February. And then second leg uh, a couple of weeks later on the 13th of March. In the meantime, I'm not going to go through all them games. But we've got games against Lazio, Inter, Napoli, Juve, Sassuolo. They're, they're up there at the minute. Uh see if they can stick around with the Champions League spots and yeah so hopefully we're going to be looking a bit better in the league when we next come together as we we are currently fifth but that is it for this episode I hope you enjoyed it if you did make sure to hit the like button subscribe to the channel to get all my content when it comes out hit the notification bell to stay notified and I'll see you next time